This video will demonstrate how to design a fully restrained welded flange plate moment connection along with a shear tab in VA Connect. Let's get started. In this example, we will design the flange plates and shear tab to connect a W18 by 50 to the flange of a W14 by 99 as shown in the detail. VA Connect designs this connection according to the AISC design specifications. Since this connection could experience moment reversal from the lateral loads, two load sets will be used with the moment from wind being opposite in each load set. VA Connect assumes that the flange plates resist all of the moment and the axial load while the shear tab carries all of the shear force. Therefore, the shear tab is designed to resist the shear directly without any eccentricity. To avoid overhead welds in the field, the top plate will have less width than the flange while the bottom plate will be wider than the flange. Also, the bottom plate will only be welded along two edges. We will start out in VA Connect by adjusting the geometry of the connection. Selecting the beam, a W18 by 50 will be chosen from the shape database. In the material database, we see A992 grade 50 steel is used by default. Next, we will adjust the thickness of the support to be equal to the flange thickness of a W14 by 99 column. Selecting the shear tab, we will use three 3 quarter inch diameter bolts as a first try and leave the thickness at a quarter inch and the material set to A36 steel. We will increase the length of the bottom plate to 12 inches so that we have approximately the same amount of weld connecting both plates to the flanges. Also, we will increase the width of the bottom plate to 9 inches, which is larger than the 7.5 inch wide flange. We will change the top plate width to 6.5 inches, which is less than the flange, and thus the plates can be attached to the beam using only downward fillet welds. Now with the geometry roughed in, we can look at the project status to see that the detailing is okay since the numerous checks pass. Next we will move on to apply the loads to the connection. For our first load set, we will enter the values for the dead load and the wind load. For this load set, the wind load moment places the top flange in tension. Next, we will create a second load set and enter the values for the dead load and the wind load. The wind load now applies moment in the opposite direction that places the top flange in compression. With the surface level loads defined, we can go to the load case manager and select which building code we want to use for the load combinations which are automatically implemented. With the load specified for the connection, we can now turn our attention to the project status to see the numerous limit states that are automatically checked. Immediately, we see that about half of the limit states are failing, indicating that we need to make some modifications to the connection. Doing a quick scan, we see that the bolts are failing, the shear tab is failing for several limit states, the top flange plate is failing in tension, and the welds to the flanges and to the supports do not have enough capacity. Clicking on any limit state produces a detailed calculation for the controlling load set and load case. For the top flange plate and tension, load set 1 controls with a factor of 1.2 on the dead load. For the top plate and compression, load set 2 controls with a 0.9 factor on the dead load, which makes sense since the dead load moment opposes the wind load moment. Switching back to the model view, we can now quickly modify the parameters of the connection to get the limit states to pass. First, we will select the shear tab and increase the number of bolts to 4, which satisfies the bolt shear and also satisfies all the limit states for the shear tab except block shear. To address this, we could increase the shear tab's thickness, but it might be more economical to increase the edge distance to the bolts. To increase the capacity of the top plate, we will change its thickness to 3 quarters of an inch, and now we see the unity value is less than 1. To address the failing fillet welds at the top flange, we will increase the weld to 5 sixteenths of an inch. While we could use a full penetration weld at the support, we will opt to use a double sided 3 8 inch fillet weld. Since the bottom plate is wider than the top plate, we can get away with only a quarter inch weld at the support, and we will use a 5 sixteenths inch weld at the flange for consistency of the field welds. Now all the limit states pass and the detailing of the connection is satisfactory. With the design complete, we can switch to the reports view to easily create a report 
to document our work. A concise design summary is automatically generated showing the unity values for each limit state. Also, we can add a detailed report showing the calculations for each limit state or summary tables for each limit to the report. In just a few minutes, we have used VA Connect to create an optimal design for our welded flange plate connection and produce a report to document our work. To try VA Connect for yourself, head over to our website and download the free trial.